you know, now that Fred Flintstone uh, then took his ass home. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, y'all. Welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Okay, Bill Barr, Fred, a.k.a. Fred Flintstone is gone, right? But this article that's up here is the most insane, insidious crap that I've ever heard that that is being allowed to happen. And my thing is, who is the marionette? Who is the marionette? Because you know it's a hidden hand. This is not normal. Nothing about none of this shit is normal. And I've been around long enough now to know some the milk is real dirty. You talk about something in the milk ain't clean. This, this the milk is so damn dirty that um listen to this. Cause y'all already knew. But the Trump administration announced that it will continue to carry out execution in the days and weeks leading up to the inauguration of President elect Joe Biden with the last one now scheduled just five days before uh, Biden takes office on January 20th. This bloodthirsty decision is another particular grotesque way in which Donald Trump and his Justice Department are defying the norms and conventions for modern-day presidential transition. The Death Penalty Information Center reports that the last time an outgoing administration did anything remotely this grotesque was more than a century ago in 1889. At that time, Grover Cleveland was the first Democrat to be elected president after the Civil War and the only president to ever have served as an executioner when he was a sheriff in Erie County, New York. He permitted three executions to proceed in the period between his electoral defeat and Benjamin Harris's inauguration. Since then, every outgoing administration has halted the federal death penalty during the transition period. Trump and his now defunct Attorney General William Barr are not merely falling in, fall, failing to engage in a merciful pause. They are rushing to execute persons who might be spared by a new administration. Indeed, the Biden administration intends to try to abolish the federal death penalty and provide some incentives for states to abolish it as well. A, a spokesperson reaffirmed its this intention on Saturday. The president elects opposes the death penalty now and in the future. And as president will work to use this well, I'm glad that Joe Biden um, is going to abolish the death penalty. Um, and, uh, so that's what they say. They say that his plan is to abolish, um, and a spokesperson reaffirmed that, that the president elect opposes the death penalty now and in the future. And as president, he will work to end its use. I mean, cause come on, let's just face it. Most black people, uh, on death row. A lot of them have been found innocent. We always, already now have realized that we are the engine, the coal that runs this train. Okay, so they need black and brown bodies. They throw them in prison to keep the money chain going, to keep it flowing. And so I'm glad that in wake of so many innocent men being in prison for Years and years and years. And if Joe Biden is responsible for some of that, I think it just be fit that he be the president that abolished the death penalty, period. 
And I think that to me, that would be the the, the least that he could do walking in office, considering all the death sentences that he sent families to uh, when their loved ones were sent to prison and uh, during the drug trade, the drug wars. Uh, that would just be fitting that he'd be the one to do that. The changing nature of America's death penalty politics is also reflected in the fact that the number of executions carried out at the state level has declined to the lowest number since 1983. This year, even the most pro-death penalty states have, to some degree, recognized the significant health risks associated with carrying out executions during the pandemic and stopped them. All told, Seven men have been executed in five different states, Alabama, Georgia, Missouri, Tennessee, and Texas, with South Carolina scheduled to carry out one before the end of the year. At the same time, the Trump administration has moved full speed ahead with the federal death penalty. The Trump and Barr have gone to the great threat of the COVID-19 and gone ahead with executions forcing lawyers, religious advisors, and victims' family members to risk their health if they choose to be present. They carried out seven executions in a three-month period last summer. If all goes according to administration's newly announced plan, it will make history in yet another way. Another way. We've got to do it grand. You know how it is. We've got to do it the best. Jeez. It would be the first time that the federal government ends up carrying out more executions, 10, in a single year than are carried out in all the states which retain capital punishment. And that's the total number is eight. Those 10 executions would be the most carried out by a federal government since 1896, when Cleveland's second administration put 16 people to death. Moreover, like many of the Trump administration's policies and actions, the federal death penalty's revival is inflected with racial discrimination and arbitrariness. A Justice Department study conducted in 2000 found significant racial disparities in the department's own handling of capital charging decisions. It reported that from 1995 to 2000, minority defendants were involved in 80% of the cases federal prosecutors referred to the department for consideration as capital punishment. In 72% of the cases approved for pro prosecution, the defendants were a person of color. No kidding. The study also found that white defendants were twice as likely as a member of racial minorities to be offered a plea deal with life imprisonment as punishment. Citing his concerns about the patterns of racial discrimination and other problems in the death penalty system, President Barack Obama ordered a new review of the federal death penalty but it was not completed before he left office. Citing his concern about patterns of racial discrimination and other problems in the death penalty system, Barack Obama ordered another review of the death penalty, but it was not completed again before he left office. So today, racial minorities constitute 50% of the inmates awaiting execution at the Federal Penitentiary in Terry Hall, Indiana, a figure only slightly lower than the 55% found on the state death row. But race is not the only source of arbitrariness in the federal system. Ge <coughs> Geographically, plays, uh, geography plays a key role as well in both charging and citizen decisions. From 1995 to 2000, 42% of the 383 federal deaths cases submitted to the Attorney General for review came from just five 
Oh my god. Uh <laughs> and he got him before he left. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's so pathetic. Moreover, like many of Trump's administration policies and action, the federal death penalty revival is inflected with racial discrimination and uh, arbitrariness. Wow. The Department of Justice study conducted in 2000 found significant racial disparities, as I said, in the department's own handling of capital charging decision. It reported that from 1995 to 2000, minority defendants were involved in 80% of the cases federal prosecutor, prosecutors referred to the department for consideration as capital prosecution. In 72% of the cases approved for prosecution, the defendants were persons of color. Do y'all hear that shit? In 72% of the cases approved for prosecution, the defendants were persons of color. The study also found that white defendants were twice as likely as members of racial minorities to be offered a plea deal with life imprisonment as the punishment, as opposed to death. Citing his concerns about the patterns of racial discrimination and other forms of in the death penalty system, Barack Obama ordered another review of the death penalty. Okay. So, you know, you know, race is not the only arbitration in the federal uh, system. Ge uh, geography plays a key role as well in both charges and sentences. From 95 to 2000, 42% of the 183 federal death cases submitted to the Attorney General for review came from just five of the 94 federal districts. And federal death verdicts, like those in the states, are concentrated in states that were claimed by the former Confederacy. Three of them, Texas, Missouri, and Virginia, accounted for 40% of the total. Now, that's just damn too ridiculous. These facts, as well as unprecedented nature of Trump's administration current execution plans, led three Democratic U.S. Senators and one member of Congress to ask Barr on November 13th to suspend the federal execution so the incoming Biden-Harris administration can evaluate and determine the future use of the death penalty. Four days later, the Congressional Black Caucus, Caucus joined this push to halt the federal execution. The caucus noted what it called the senseless and unnecessary risk to innocent persons charged with carrying out federal execution during this current pandemic that will make any scheduled execution in a tender box for further outbreaks and exasperate concerns over the possibility of miscarriage of justice. Well, they got their response last week when Barr announced that his intention to move ahead with the already scheduled executions and to carry out still more in the winding days. With these plans, the administration not only thumbs its nose at president, it also reveals yet again its true character. The New York Times colonist Linda Greenhouse rightfully summed it up when she called Trump the years uh, the Trump years mean, I, I reckon to say, uh, low down, dirty. As she observed, there is a meanness to the man and to the policies issued from a sycophant, sycophantic bubble that passes for his administration. <laughs> there is a meanness to the man and to the policies issued from a sycophant's bubble that passes from the sycophant's bubble that passes for his administration. There could be nothing meaner than Barr's petty final day's decision to carry out these executions. I mean, 
can y'all give me any reason why a lame duck uh, it's just ridiculous it's just just add to the ridiculousness that has become the Trump fiasco. I'll see.